Section One of the Works of Edgar Allan Poe, Raven Edition, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Bob Neufeld. The Works of Edgar Allan Poe, Raven Edition, Volume One. Edgar Allan Poe, An Appreciation caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never never more this stanza from the raven was recommended by james russell lowell as an inscription upon the baltimore monument which marks the resting-place of edgar allan poe the most interesting and original figure in american letters and to signify that peculiar musical quality of poe's genius which enthralls every reader mr lowell suggested this additional verse from the haunted palace and all with pearl and ruby glowing was the fair palace door through which came flowing 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 and sparkling evermore a troop of echoes whose sweet duty was but to sing in voices of surpassing beauty the wit and wisdom of their king born in poverty at boston january nineteenth eighteen o nine dying under painful circumstances at baltimore october seventh eighteen forty nine his whole literary career of scarcely fifteen years a pitiful struggle for mere subsistence his memory malignantly misrepresented by his earliest biographer, Griswold, how completely has truth at last routed falsehood, and how magnificently has Poe come into his own. For The Raven, first published in 1845, and within a few months read, recited, and parodied wherever the English language was spoken, the half-starved poet received ten dollars. Less than a year later, his brother poet, N. P. Willis, issued this touching appeal to the admirers of genius, on behalf of the neglected author, his dying wife, and her devoted mother, then living under very straitened circumstances in a little cottage at Fordham, New York. Quote, Here is one of the finest scholars, one of the most original men of genius, and one of the most industrious of the literary profession of our country whose temporary suspension of labor from bodily illness drops him immediately to a level with the common objects of public cha sample complete ready to continue <laughs>